Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am a diva, a divinely inspired visionary awakened. I dance through life authentically alive. I have the right to say no, the freedom to say yes, and the power to change my mind. I am a spiritual diva. Amen. And so are you, men, you're divos. Right. There is so much significance to being here, so, so much significance. I am at home, I'm home. Since 1978, I began my journey here. And I have returned today a unity minister to bring home the fruits of your investment in me. To bring forth for you the realization that the time and care you gave me after my difficult diagnosis and terrifying prognosis was well worth the effort. Thank you so much. And so I want to talk about the journey the Journey Home. That is the title of the new book, which I had hoped would be out by the time I came, but it won't be out until April, so you'll just have to invite me back. <laughs> Was that good, Michael? <laughs> the Journey Home. We, we are all on a journey. Every last one of us is on a journey. We come in as souls. The, this planet, this physical realm, is the classroom, and the soul creates the curriculum. And along the journey, the experiences we have are designed to fulfill the intention of that curriculum in order that we may have a realization of the truth of our being. And to walk through this journey with the awareness that we are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience on a human plane in a body. We are not human beings. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience on a human plane in a body. For you see, if we are spiritual, uh, spiritual beings, we cannot have anything but a spiritual experience. Amen. So that those things, those challenges, those difficulties, those people that show up, that are not happening to us, they are happening for us. We are experiencing who we are not in order to discover who we are. And so all of those things that we avoid and run from are only delaying the journey. <laughs> so, my journey reminds me of the journey of a biblical character which has so much information for me and has had so much information for me that I want to share it with you. You can get all the details in the book, I promise you, when it comes out. But I just want to give you a little bit of something so that you can use some of this for your journey. I'm talking about the parable of the prodigal son. Now, I will ask this question. Who has not heard of the prodigal son? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does not matter what theology you've been in, what religion you've been in, somewhere or other you have heard of the prodigal son. So, it is located in Luke 15, 11 through 31. I will not read that whole scripture. However, because I went over the last time anyway, so, 
However, I will give you the Cliff Notes version and let you know that at the welcome table is a handout with my metaphysics, the scripture, the stages of the journey, and affirmations. Please be sure to get one, okay? Here we go. Youngest son of wealthy man goes to father, who is still alive, by the way, asks for his inheritance. Father gives it to him. He goes off to the far country, presumably to find himself, blows the money through, it says, riotous living in the Bible. We call it partying. Um, <laughs> then finds himself in a job, a part-time job for a farmer, for room and board, feeding the pigs. And he comes to himself. That would kept me to come to myself, too. Just a smell would make me come to myself. <laughs> Realizes who he is in that moment, that he is the son of a wealthy father. And that he can go back home. He realizes, however, that he has done something possibly wrong. And he says to himself, I will go to my father, I will return to my father, but I will not ask to be his son. I will ask him instead to hire me as one of his hired hands because I don't deserve to be his son. So he starts home, he's on the journey home, and the father, when he is still far away, sees his son and begins to prepare for his return. A feast with the fatted calf and the robe and, and new sandals for his feet. He would need a robe, he probably smells like pig. So, <laughs> and then when he gets home, and I want you to hold this, I want you to remember this piece of it, that when he was still far away, the father began to prepare for him. Okay, hold that one, because that's key. So he comes home, they welcome him, they have the celebration. Of course, he has an elder brother. And the elder brother is pretty peeved. <laughs> And says, I've been here all along. I've been helping out. Look, he goes off, takes all the money, and, and blows it. And you've never allowed me to entertain my friends and have a feast and so forth and so on. And the father says to him, we should rejoice. Because your brother, who was lost, is now found. We should celebrate because your brother, who was dead, is now alive. So what are we talking about? What is this journey pointing out? Well, I began to see this journey as I studied it deeply as a process of conscious evolution, as a journey through our evolution in consciousness. And consciousness is that state of being awake and aware of what it is to be in the world and not of the world, to be able to see simultaneously that which is within and that which is outside of us. And that is when we are consciously awake and aware of who we are, of the truth of our being. So it, this process then is a journey of stages of development. Now, I created, from what I understood of that parable, seven stages or steps along the journey of our curriculum. But that's a Sheilaism. Don't look to find it anywhere except in my book. Whenever I say something that I make up, it's a Sheilaism, okay? Okay. So, we look quickly at, there's a couple of things that metaphysically I need to share with you. The youngest son is the unwakened consciousness. Got it? Okay. And the far country represents anything that takes us out of the awareness of who we are, that takes us away from our relationship with God. That's the far country, okay? 
the robe, the slippers, that is our prosperity that awaits us when we return to our father, mother, God. And the father represents our relationship with God. It represents that divine spark that created everything, including us. The father's house, the kingdom of heaven that is always present always available to us. We do not have to die to get it. In fact, I went to a funeral a couple of days ago, a relative, and the minister said, we were all going to hell. Oh yeah, don't think just because you've done good things, you're not going to hell. I'm not joking, that's what he said. But I said that I've already been there. <laughs> I have had my hell here, and I've had my heaven here. And you see, because that's really the truth. We don't die and go to heaven or hell. We have it here and now in order to fulfill the curriculum so that when we review it, we can see where we made it or where we missed the mark. And then if we want to, we can decide, okay, I'm gonna go back and do it again and try to get it right this time. I'm not coming back. So, <laughs> but the purpose of the journey is to evolve, beloved. So, so let's look at the first stage of it. It is discovering our place in the cosmos. It is the, the process of finding where we fit, where we belong, who we are. And we get to look at where we are in the world and see that although we are in this human space suit, it is not who we truly are. And now it's leading us to the next phase or next stage or step, which is seeing beyond the illusion of duality where we begin to know that, yes, in this universe, it is a universe of polar opposites. However, those polar opposites make up the one. Because you cannot have dark without light. You cannot have up without down. Try jumping up and see if you don't come down. <laughs> you cannot have left without right, because otherwise you'll be just going left all the time. You must have these polar opposites, but here's the deal, they are not who you are. The polar opposites represent the yin and the yang. They make one, they are blended into each other. So we must learn to see beyond the illusion of duality so we can stop focusing on good and evil, right and wrong, and we can see it all as divinely perfect. The next stage is understanding the one will. I know most of you here in a unity church know about the spiritual laws of the universe, the law of mind action, the law of cause and effects. There are many other law of compensation and so forth. So we are to discover through, a, through trial and error because we don't We do not know them, so we must practice them. We must see that when we do this, this happens. When we do this, this happens. So we like this better, so we do more of this. Got it? Okay. The next stage is accepting our divine purpose. We all have a purpose. We all. And I know there are some of you sitting in here today who believe you don't have a purpose. Trust me, and this is not a Sheilaism, you have a purpose. <laughs> there is something you came to do. And the way of discovering it is, it's in here. Go in there and have a conversation with God. What is my purpose? What is your will for me? What am I here to do? Who am I here to be? The next 
stage is recognizing our connection to others. Beloved, this is needed right now more than ever. I regret to inform you, Donald Trump is you. <laughs> We created him. Oh, trust me. We created ISIS. ISIS is us. For whatever negative and whatever anger and whatever rage and whatever criticism, condemnation, and judgment that you are holding created ISIS. Therefore, it follows we created ISIS. What is our consciousness that has created what is going on in our world? Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. The next stage is living the law. Living the law. So you're understanding the one will. You're recognizing your connection with other. And now we are living the law. We learn these laws of the universe. We make a conscious effort to live in alignment with them so that our lives flow in the direction of the kingdom of heaven all the time. So that our lives flow in the direction of our good all the time. And, and by doing that, when we reach a critical mass, the world rises up with us, and a critical <laughs> and a critical mass is only one percent of the world's population. That's all. So that's not that hard. That's not our, that's not that hard. The last stage is creating harmony in the world creating harmony in the world. How do we stop the violence? How do we stop the chaos? How do we stop all this anger, all this division, all this increase in separation and racism? How do we heal this? By forgiving. The key is forgiveness. See, we talk about peace on earth. It should be let there be forgiveness on earth and let it begin with me. Hmm. Because you see, you cannot have peace without forgiveness. If you are holding anything against anybody, including yourself, you have just set up a block to your peace. Because forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. It is not for the other person. Because everyone that we have not forgiven, we are carrying them around with us 24-7. <laughs> they are living with us daily. They are eating with us. We're taking showers with them. And they are sleeping with us at night. How many of you have sleep disorders? <laughs> Too many people in that bed. <laughs> Kick them out of that bed by forgiving them. Forgiveness does not mean letting them off the hook. It lets you off the hook. So when someone says to me, oh, I, I can never forgive them. I will never forgive them. I guess they'll just be sleeping in the bed with you every night. <laughs> That's up to you. It's your choice. You can forgive or not. But how your life shows up will be shaped one way or the other. You can have a life of peace and joy and harmony and love and loving relationships. Or you can have chaos, upsets, <coughs> conflicting relationships in your life. It's your choice. 
The choice is yours. Life is a choice. I, I keep hearing my daughter when she's talking to my grandson and, and he's done something and she'll, she says, you know, life is about choices. It's all about the choices you make. And how it turns out has to do with the choices you make. I am asking you to make a choice. Forgive. And they don't have to know you've forgiven them because at a soul level, they will know. Forgiveness, when it is done with a spiritual intent, operates at the soul level. Their soul will know they have been forgiven. And the other one is you got to forgive yourself, honey. That is the hardest one for everybody because the things we hold against ourselves are mostly based on mis perception, the blame, the shame, the guilt we carry is because we have told ourselves a story about what happened. And the difference between what actually happened and what we perceived as happening is a moment of pain and suffering. Peace, pain and suffering. Peace pain and suffering. So I'm inviting you today to begin to look at the possibility of forgiveness. I invite you to the workshop this afternoon. It is a powerful radical forgiveness ceremony where you will get to forgive many people in a very powerful way. What is it Michael says? If you have some other plans, change them. Because it's time, it's time for us to step out of that old paradigm of blame and shame and guilt and judgment, and criticism, condemnation and judgment, and to step into that place of peace that is fostered through our journey to forgiveness. And so we must step into the power to forgive. What happened to my heart? What used to be so full of light has grown so dark shadows of resentment and all the hurts I've ever felt I'm on my knees I need some help give to the dream there used to be contentment deep inside of me now there's hurt and anger eating at my soul I've got to find a way to let it go With forgiveness, I just might find a way to let love in and heal my life. Give me strength. Please help this dying heart to live. Grant me power. The power Dying heart to 
I invite you to close your eyes now. Allow yourself to bring to mind all of the people that you haven't forgiven. Bring to mind all of those who have hurt you, harmed you. And I want you to bring up what happened. And then I want you to bring to mind their faces. And I want you to line them up in front of you, one by one, from left to right, standing next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. And at the end of the line, I want you to place yourself, remembering all of the things that have caused you to feel guilt and blame and shame, self-judgment, self-hatred place you right there at the end. And then I want you to walk along in front of each of them, looking in their eyes and remembering what they did, what they said. Look at each one. Pass along the road. And when you get to the end of the row, look in your own eyes, remembering everything that you're holding against yourself. And I want you to look, just glance through the entire row as you begin to step back. I forgive you, I forgive you, everything that I've been holding on to, I let go, I surrender, I surrender, I'm ready for my change I'm ready for my change sing it with me I forgive you I forgive you I forgive you everything that I've been holding on to I let go I surrender I surrender I surrender I'm ready for my change I'm ready for my change I'm ready for my change I forgive them I forgive them look at them I forgive them everything, everything that I've been holding on to, I let go, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I'm ready for my change, I'm ready for my change, I'm ready for my change, I'm ready change. Now look in your own eyes. I forgive me. I forgive me. Everything that I've been holding on to, I let go. I surrender. I surrender. I'm ready. I'm ready. Open your eyes and see. 
sing it. I forgive you. Give you. I forgive. children and the ones coming after them are depending on you. What we set up for them is what they will have to experience. Think about what's going on right now. Do you really want these children to experience this? If not, let's get busy because we can do this. We already have it within us. Do you remember Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz when she was trying to go home? They told her, it's inside of you. It's always been there. They gave her those ruby red slippers and the red slippers represent the heart. Home is not where the heart is. The heart is where home is. And so let us go to our hearts and discern what is right and true for our generations who are coming forward. And let us promise to go forward and do what we need to do to release all of this chaos and conflict and hatred and separation and prejudice and fear and doubt. It's up to us. And I leave this affirmation because I want you to affirm this. I am at home in the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. Together, I am at home in the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. Again, I am at home in the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. Once more, I am at home in the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. And so it is.